So let's step back a second and uh, remind ourselves how a half circle might work and why we might want to even have a function for those of you who might not be familiar with this idea. Let's just look at the simple code that's on the computer at the moment on the screen. Right, this is a fairly basic program that's going to do nothing more than draw a half circle. So I'll click the run button. Uh, it resets you know, to the sort of the top of the screen and draws this half circle. And the way my half circle works is at 180 times, we move one step and turn one degree. Right? Do that enough times, you get this, this idea of a half circle. And so right now, if I were going to use this and say, well, that's a pretty good start. I want to have, you know, I want to make the letter B maybe, for example, out of this. Well, if I'm going to make the letter B out of this, then what I need to do is once I get here, I need to turn the cat back around so these facing the right and make another one of those half circles. So I'm going to come over to motion and we're going to say, hey, point in direction 90 so that you're pointing back to the right. And now I need to repeat this block of code, right? Which means I have to come over here and say repeat 180 degrees. And I need to move one step and turn one degree. Of course, I could have gone up and copied and, or duplicated all of this, but, but I'm going to do it the hard way, the long way, just to, to repeat. You know, this is tedious, and if I've got a lot of these, I don't want to have to build this multiple times. And so now when I run this, you'll see that I get something that's starting to look more like a B. You say, well, it's not that big a deal. You could use cut and paste. You can use the copy feature and, and copy that over. And that's fine as long as I like the way this B is going to work. But suppose I get really tired of watching it go really slowly like that. And some of you may remember that there was a helpful hint I made in a different uh, video earlier in the course. It said, hey, if instead of you know doing 180 one and one, uh, I could kind of factor this in. Suppose each time I went five steps and turned five degrees, well, that means that I can divide this by five, and I only need to do that 36 times. And so now I can run this, and you see it goes much more quickly through that, that initial uh, part of the B. Right? This went much faster this way. Um, but you know, if, if I'm gonna, if I've got, if you think back to my initials where we had five of those half circles, if I decide that I want to change this from 180 to 36, I have to change it five different times, and that's really tedious. It's really boring. So we've got two reasons why this was, was kind of you know, lousy to do. One, we had to uh, co either copy and paste every time we want a new half circle. And two, every time I want, if I want to modify what that, that half circle looks like or does, I'm going to have to change it multiple times. And that's a perfect place then for a function. Again, if you remember my definition of a function, uh, and I'm pulling this directly from the code.org curriculum, a function is a piece of code that you call over and over again. So if I'm going to make multiple half circles, I want to create a function called half circle that I can call over and over again. If you think about that, every block already in existence in Scratch is a function. It's a piece of code that you call over and over again, right? You say, well, what happens when I, when I call the put pen down block. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that it does something and, and the result is the pen goes down. Well, suppose I want to add my own blocks like this called half circle. The way I do that in Scratch is I come to this area called more blocks. And right now when I click on more blocks, that's that dark purple we saw earlier, you'll see there's nothing here yet. Uh, so in, in this regard, it's a lot like when we first started working with data, right? Data, you're adding stuff into Scratch. You're adding in variables well, he, or lists. Here, we're going to add in more blocks. And so I want to create a block that's going to make this half circle. So I'm going to click on the Make Block feature. And what comes up is this pop-up, sort of, again, similar to what happened when we wanted to make a new uh, variable. You got a pop-up that said, give this thing a name. And so I want to give this a name. I want to create a block called Half Circle. And I'm just going to start with a very basic block called Half Circle to begin with. So I'm going to say OK. And, and two things happened. First, you'll see that I get a very basic block here called half circle that I can drag and drop out and use in places. And then what I got over here is this, this hat top block, uh, or, or you know, this definition block that says, hey, this is going to be where I define what half circle looks like. And, and realistically, this is what I want half circle to look like. 
right? I'm not going to get into it all this other stuff with directions and pen size and where it is. I'm just going to assume that that's handled by the main program. But whenever somebody says, I want to draw a half circle, I want to make this, this, you know, this half curve, which was 36 times move five steps and five degrees. And so I'm going to put that there and I'm going to throw this away. And so now the idea is that, that you know, in my main code, I want to do all my places everybody stuff. I want to set the pen size and go to where I needed it to be. And then I want to draw a half circle, right? And so now there's a half circle block over here, just like there's all the other blocks that I could manipulate. And so I want to make a half circle, and that's this top half of my B. And then I want to flip so that I'm pointing to the right rather than upside down and to the left. And I want to create another half circle. And so I, I can call this twice. Remember the definition of a function, a piece of code you can call over and over again. I've called half circle over and over again. Okay, I don't know if twice is over and over again, but I've called it twice. And both times that it calls, it's going to come over and it's going to run this block of code. It's going to repeat 36 times and do 5 and 5. And so now I can run this. And there, boom, we see it very, very quickly, or fairly quickly. right? And if I want to modify this any and say, oh, I think I can make that even faster. Instead of 36 times, let me do 18 times and do uh, 10 and 10. Right, something like that. And so now I only have to change it once. I've changed the definition of what a half circle is going to look like. But I still call half circle over here, and it goes even much faster. Or if I say, no, no, I really like it when it's slow, I can go back to uh, 1 and 1 and 180. Right? And oops, what did I do wrong here? Let's, let's troubleshoot here. Right, 180 times I wanted to move one step and turn one degree. Got a typo there. So let's try this again. And now we can see it very slowly drawing out that half circle. My computer seems to be running a little slow with this video. But, but we can see it run. And again, the advantage of this is any time you want to change the definition of what does it mean to make a half circle, I only need to change it once over here in this block, in this function, and it changes both times I call that block. And so this is a really powerful tool that you and your students can use when you have a piece of code, a, a piece of functionality that you want to use either multiple times in the same program or multiple times from different programs and you want to move this block, copy this block from program to program so you don't have to rewrite it every time. And that's the, the beginnings of how we build your own blocks, how we create a function in scratch.